Tonight, what is seen as a step in the right direction, at least, the Catholic Church in Argentina has helped to convict two priests for sexually abusing children. The priests will likely spend the rest of their lives in prison. But the reason that they were convicted may have to do more with the depravity of their crime. And when I say depravity, boy, do I mean it. Listen to this. You see, they didn't only abuse little boys. They abused little boys who couldn't speak out. They were deaf. It's a horrible case for a church that has still never really properly come to grips, many would argue, with the sexual abuse of children, mostly boys. Joining us now, News with Rick Sanchez special correspondent Michelle Greenstein, who's been working on this story. What, tell us about this deal in Argentina, first of all. Sure. In late November, two priests from Argentina were convicted for, like you said, sexually abusing deaf children. Now, they did this at a Catholic school for deaf children called the Provolo Institute. And one of the defendants is Nicola Bruno Corradi Soliman, who is actually an Italian priest who, for some reason, was allowed to become the director of the Provolo Institute, yes. despite having faced previous accusations of sexual abuse in three cities prior to this case. That's, That's that him? coming out right yeah, there. Right. Now, in this trial, that lasted over three months, a tribunal in Mendoza, Argentina, sentenced him to 42 years in prison and the other priest, who is an Argentine priest, to 45 years in prison. Now, some of the, some of the victims were actually present at the sentencing, some of these former students of the Provolo Institute, as well as some parents. Let's take a listen to one of these parents. All right. Shalom Akim. I'd like to say Kahalayam, Yahawah, Ba'asham Yahushai, Ba'asham Rakaakwadash, you know, double honesty, apostles. And elders of great millstone that rule well. Peace and salutation to the Akim around the world that pushed us through to the four corners of the earth. All right, this is Yaraba from EGMS training at East Camp. You know, as I say, I'll do a touch on this. As you can see, they said it was usually, you know, the Catholic priests, you know, the popular for raping little boys. But this time it was little boys who couldn't even speak to defend themselves. And they see the person who act, and they see they said that the person who actually put in charge. He had accusations against him even before about about molestation. He did not articles previously before this that talk about um, the Catholic priest having um, child tra child trafficking rings. You understand? I am very satisfied. The truth is, yes, now my son will be able to breathe. He will be able to live because now they're in prison. They've been sentenced. It's very distressing. Now, according to the Washington Post, church officials, including Pope Francis, were actually made aware of these allegations against karate in 2014, but they didn't start an investigation into this once he had been arrested. And according to the New York Times, um, here this is something you're going to love. This is really interesting. When Pope John Paul II was living in Poland, he actually claimed that sexual abuse allegations as a whole were just attempts to smear and discredit the church. And this actually remained his stance for the next couple of decades. So whether you like it or not, this is actually coming from the top down. In fact, in 2002, he put into writing that all charges against priests were to be reported secretly to the Vatican and actually have these hearings held in private in chambers. Now, this case... So even the Pope himself was trying to cover up and even protect priests that was doing this wickedness. Why? Because he wicked just like them. You understand? He wicked just like them. He just do the same things that they just do and they just protect their own. That we're talking about today, the case against these two priests in Argentina, are just one example of uh, pedophile priests being allowed to advance into these high positions, in this case as school officials. But in one case in the United States, where uh, the Archbishop of Boston even claimed that the boy and his parents contributed to the abuse by being negligent after one of his priests uh, was sexually assaulting a six year old, the Archbishop, whose name was Cardinal Bernard Law, actually was promoted by Pope John Paul II to head one of Rome's major basilicas. So people are saying this as an example of a lack of accountability right. in this organization. Um, and not only was he promoted to that position, he was also uh, from then on able to live with diplomatic immunity. Now, when it comes to the United States, which is... No, for those who don't know, diplomatic immunity is like to be immune from, from, from taxes and from certain laws, whereas <clears throat> it has certain people that you can't arrest, you know, who have diplomatic immunity. You can't arrest them or, you know, it has certain laws that don't apply to them, in other words. 
and this is a, this is rights and privileges he wanted to give to somebody who was known to be a what a molester where we are today, the statute of limitation laws are actually a really significant part of this sex abuse story. According to a Philadelphia-based nonprofit called Child USA, mm -hmm. the average child abuse victim doesn't come forward until they're 52 years old. That's on average. So this is long after most uh, statute of limitations expires in most states, right? So this means that priests can mm -hmm. move on with jobs, their community relationships, and the law is left virtually impotent when it comes to holding these people accountable. And when it comes to responsibility from the church, we have church officials often employing the language of repentance and forgiveness rather than accountability or even incarceration uh, despite the fact that I'll read a scripture quick it's in Isaiah 10 verse 5 from 1 right it says woe to them that decree unrighteous decrees and that right, that right grievousness which they have prescribed <clears throat> and that is what these Catholic priests be doing and they just be trying to do this while trying to keep an image or a facade of the most high because they just proclaim themselves or profess themselves to be godly but and really and truly just be using that image to do wickedness. And the people are none the wiser because there are people who see in constantly that these so-called um, Catholic priests, these so-called men of God, doing these things. And you know they will have nothing bad to say about them. There are people who does who still believe in Catholicism even to this day, even though their leaders doing these kind of things. And the scriptures say what you would know them by the fruit. So if there's the kind of things that they're doing, then it's obvious what they're teaching can be correct. And the people will accept them. But for the men of the Lord who are teaching the truth and actually showing them what the scriptures actually say, they will say the men of the Lord are demons. You understand? And they will say that we are devils. But these are things that we expect. Why? Because the scriptures say that. Yahushai Mashiach himself said, they say if, if, uh, <clears throat> if they call the head of the house Beelzebub, you know, where, what, what else you'll expect for his actual... His actual servants you know just paraphrasing not those not those who are trying to look like his servants but his actual servants we will have to go through the same thing right i read it to over it say warn to them that decree and righteous decrees and right grievousness which they have prescribed to turn aside the needy from judgment and that would just be doing by by trying to protect these priests on them it's very rare that a catholic priest will actually be convicted for child molestation <coughs> It's saying to take away the right from the poor of my people, that widows may be their prey. You understand? But in this situation, children is the prey. <laughs> you understand? You say that widows might be their prey, may be their prey, and and they and that they may rub the fatherless. Elmo station is a felony. All right. Thanks so much, Michelle, on that story. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Tom Doyle is a former priest and this is a this is a part I, I wanted to touch on you know very importantly also because he was a this guy was a priest and he he was for speaking out against it he he's not a priest anymore he left the priesthood after well criticizing the church for what it had done he did this 30 years ago and still uh he does not believe and i don't want to put words in your mouth that they're not where they need to be. You started this battle some 30 some years ago? 30, 1984. You went to essentially the bishops and said, we've got a problem in this church and the problem is? The problem is that there's uh, a whole underground of sexual abuse of children going on that they were not acknowledging that was covered in a thick blanket of secrecy. And the problem wasn't so much the dysfunctional priests that were doing it, it was the bishops that were hiding it and covering it up and but, lying about but it. But listen to what you just said. The words are lost on us now because we've heard so much about it. Imagine in any other corporation, you go to the CEO mm -hmm. and you say, we've got a problem in our company. People in our company are abusing little boys. Yeah. The first thing you do is you call the police. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And but Not here? No, of course not. Because the main issue is keep cover for the top, protect the leadership, which is the bishops and the papacy, protect them. It's, you're talking about a political structure that is a monarchy. Now, yeah. who are the most important people in the monarchy? The monarchs. Yeah, the royals. The royals. Yeah. And so that's, that was, that's been the issue all the way through. I learned that the hard way when I first began, became involved in this, and I was working in the Vatican Embassy at the time, um, down on, on Mass Avenue. 
And um, I naively thought that once the bishops found out about this, and at that time we thought, you know, we didn't have any idea that the, the other guys, two guys that were working with me on this, we had no clue how widespread this was. And we naively thought once they find out about this, how bad it is, they're going to snap to, do the right thing, and take care of business. And I was 214% wrong. I'm Catholic. You're Catholic. We grew up with the foundation of the church, which is all about Jesus Christ. If you really believe in Jesus Christ and you hear that somebody's abusing little boys, just in the name of Jesus alone, you think you want to act. What you're saying is they believe less in the foundations of Jesus Christ, which is the church, than they did protecting their fiefdom. Exactly. That's precisely the issue. I w so this is 2 Corinthians 11 verse 14, right? It say, and, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. You understand? Because even, even when it comes to, 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 to spiritual Satan itself, when you're trying to tempt you to do something that's off, how it is he has tried to put it to you? He has tried to put it to you like if it's something good. You know, like you see, like you see in them cartoons, you see the one on your left shoulder and the one on your right shoulder. And the one on your left shoulder will try to encourage you to do something that off, but you could try to make it look like if it's something good to persuade you to do it. You understand? He try to, he try to, you know, portray himself as what well, that angel of light. And this also goes for who? You say therefore. You say therefore, it is no great, it's no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness. And his ministers is who? These ones that do wickedly, you understand, who do things and pray to Satan and follow after Satan, but they try to make the self look like the of the Mosai. You understand? A good example is who? These Catholic priests. They are the ministers of Satan. Even these um these Jews and them across in Jerusalem who try to act like us, they are the ministers of Satan. Because they do the things of Satan, but they try to make themselves look like if they are of the Lord, like if they are of, you know, if they are angelic. And so therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. So they will have to answer for these things. You understand? For, for blaspheming, for doing wickedly. You understand? But trying to make, trying to deceive any people and make any, so many people think that, you know, that they of the Lord really and truly they of Satan. I was asked at a convention one time, I had given a talk, uh, can I explain why this has happened? Which is a, it's both a complex and a simple answer. And I said, I believe, and this is going to sound harsh, but I believe that the hierarchy that had protected this issue, they may be highly orthodox, believing Catholics. But I don't think they're deeply committed Christians. Wow. And that's the problem. Did they, let me ask you a question. Is part of the reason that they didn't act to remove these priests who were abusing boys is because perhaps in the past, they, not all, may have done the same thing? That's the case with some. It's, 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 a, it's a proven fact that there were some bishops that protected this, did nothing about it because they themselves were compromised. Gosh. And it came out later. Classic example was the former bishop who's now deceased of, of, uh, Albuquerque, of Santa Fe, New Mexico. Right. Bob Sanchez, who a lot of the priests knew about it. He did absolutely nothing when confronted with these issues. And at the time, in the early 90s, Santa Fe and Albuquerque were the epicenter of this issue. Explain to me something that is uncomfortable to speak about, but I don't think we can avoid it because it's the elephant in the room. I read last night in my research for this interview that upwards of 50%, according to some estimates, of priests are gay. Why are gay men so attracted to the priesthood? <laughs> Uh, you know, it's a, it's a saying in the world that says a trait of the wicked to want to look, to want to have a, a righteous look. You know, just, you know, it's something along that line that I see. Like, for example, if a woman is a whore, you know, as whoreish as she might be, she don't want anybody calling her a whore. She could always want the image of what a good woman, even though she know in, within herself that she's not. 
You understand? Because the wicked always like to have a righteous look. Like now how you say here, why it is that gay men applying for the, the, um, the position of priesthood. You understand? Because they know. They know, to begin with, the whole belief of Catholic, whereas you're not supposed to have a wife, is against the scriptures. Because originally, the Leviticus priesthood was given to Aaron and his sons. And they had wives. How else would their lineage would have been carried out? They were allowed to have wives. It had certain, you know, guidelines, as in they could only have virgins and so forth. You know, but <clears throat> they had wives. It never had any scriptures saying that a priest couldn't have a wife. You understand? This is some this this belief that they have is something man made, manipulated from the scriptures, but it is not of the scriptures. You understand? But all these priests who gay or homosexual and actually flock into the priesthood is because why? They know that they just have charge over little children as priests and they and they just abuse this. You understand? Because they inwardly their desire is wickedly. They're not of the Lord and they have no interest in the Lord. And for the record, a man of the Lord cannot be gay. A man of the Lord cannot be gay. The scriptures said any man that lie with mankind is supposed to be put to death. It never had gays in the priesthood. You understand? It have gays in their priesthood because they are not of the Lord. But there is no gays in the Lord's priesthood. I wish I could give you a, a cogent answer to that question, but I can't. Uh, the fact is, is that a very high, 50% is maybe a little low percentage. Wow. And I don't know. I'm not an expert on that. <laughs> so right. you say 50% is maybe a little lower percentage. So he's trying to put it out there that is more than 50% that actually are homosexuals. And they, they have charge over little boys. And that is show the hypocrisy of these people. Because the priests, they don't want wives. Well, the, 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 um, the guidelines of being a priest state states that what? You, yeah, you can't have a wife. And for the so-called nuns, for the so-called nuns, they're not supposed to have husbands. You understand? But these people are hypocrites. Why? Because the nuns, like I had an article the other day. It had some nuns that went to some country. And the two of them, when they come back, the belly was big. You understand? They was whining back, wherever they was. And they're not supposed to have husbands. And for the Catholic priests now, when, you understand, when they're not supposed to have wives, they're content with that, but yet they're interfering with little boys. And that even show you the mindset that they're on. Because if they were even of some kind of righteous mindset, if any whatsoever, if they were, if they were restricted from from having from having wives if they were ready of any kind of righteous mindset they would have go behind closed doors and have women just like how they say with them um, with rastafarians in public rastafarians don't eat meat but you know in private they just eat meat because that is that is what they desire if they really if these priests really desired women when they go behind closed doors they would have went with women but that is not what they're doing they're going with little boys and that inwardly showing you that they are wicked. But I can tell you this. And, and it's not to disparage someone who's gay. I, I mean, served you know, as an active priest for decades. And, and I later I knew a number of the men I served with were gay. And I, knew, I found out later that even more. Many of these men were wonderful men. They were good priests. Mm -hmm. The fact that they were gay had no bearing on their dedication, right. on, their, on their willingness and desire to serve people. But then there's another to serve dimension. People, to serve people, not the Lord. You cannot serve the Lord and be a homosexual. You understand? There's a conflict of interest. But that is problematic as it is in any society. There was a subculture that was involved in power and, and uh, relationships and all kinds of goofy things. And suppression. Were. And suppression. I mean, yeah. I have to ask, the fact that you're asking men to spend their lives without having a relationship physical relationship has to be part of the cause it is the, the whole concept of mandatory celibacy uh, is lunacy because it doesn't work it's it's uh, contrary to human nature and it's based on 
an understanding of human sexuality that goes back to pre-Christian times that is completely fallacious. And that, yes or no, is part of the problem? Yes. Tom Doyle, um, thank you for coming on and sharing this information with us. Uh, great interview. Thank you. That has nothing to do with the actual problem. They go behind little boys because they like little boys. If they, if they liked women, they would have gone behind women. That has nothing to do with the problem. They try to use that to make it look like if it's a problem, but it's not the problem. They will always go behind what they desire, which are little boys. Huh. Anyway, with that, you say Shalom.